Hello again, YouTube. This is Brian Mounts. I run TurfMechanic.com and, and the Turf Mechanic YouTube channel, the channel that you're watching right now. Regular subscribers to this channel know that I do lots of comparisons. I focus predominantly on the battery lawnmower market. Um, I do uh, other videos about lawn care and gardening and composting and and other kind of outdoor backyard kinds of things uh, but these days I've been doing a lot of lawnmower comparisons uh, today I'm coming to you with uh, the Toro recycler this is a 21 inch or I'm sorry this is a 22 inch uh, self-propelled uh, personal pace model Toro is a very well respected name in the battery power well in the lawnmower market this is their only battery powered lawnmower that they make and it's kind of new for what they do. Uh, Snapper, also a long-term uh, lawnmower maker, um, entered the, uh, the battery market a few years ago. Uh, this is the Snapper XD. They also make the Snapper HD and I believe some other models. The XD model is their uh, kind of their newest generation, strongest battery mowers yet. And currently, this Snapper XD is my favorite battery-powered mower of them all. In my garage, I've got six battery-powered mowers. I've got number seven coming in the mail and number eight coming in the mail after that. This is, this is what I do, man. I love these things. Uh, these are my toys. Uh, this Snapper XD is only the 19-inch model. This is not the self-propelled model either. They make a, they make a self-propelled all the way up to 21-inch. So, uh, top of the line Snapper XD is actually a little bit smaller than this guy. Um, but outside of the self-propelled, uh, it's basically, it's basically the same mower. Uh, Snapper XD, this thing runs at 2,800 RPM uh, blade. Uh, uh, this guy uh, is about the same, 2800 or so. It's not published, uh, but that does seem to be industry standard in the battery-powered uh, mower market. Some of the gas-powered mowers kind of come in at like the 3000 RPM range. So these are a little bit underpowered. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, say that frivolously, but um, the thing is under a no load situation. So for instance, you tip it up while the thing is running, uh, there's no load, it's not cutting anything. So that blade, basically there's like an internal, uh, almost like a computer inside of both of these things. Uh, and it senses the load, runs it at about 2,800 RPM. Once it starts encountering really thick grass, weeds, anything, once there's some tension there, the, the motor revs up to add extra power. Um, I haven't measured exactly what these things can get up to, because that's pretty hard to measure, uh, because how the heck do you measure it under a load? Um, I can flip it over and there are ways to uh, measure the blade speed and RPMs, but I don't know how you, you would do it under a load scenario. Uh, but point being, they're both very, very strong and they're comparable in terms of what they do, how they cut. Now the 21 inch model of this is gonna be obviously about an inch uh, of cutting space less than this. So let's just call them 2800 RPMs. One extra length, one extra inch of length of blade on this is going to create a faster tip speed. And of course the tip of the blade is what cuts the grass first. Um, so as that blade is going around faster, the faster that tip is, the cleaner the cut is going to be. Um, I love this Snapper XD and I have a number of videos in the past. If you're a subscriber to this channel, you've probably seen some of them. I rave about this Snapper XD. It's my favorite mower of all of them that I, that I own. Um, but it's small. That tip speed isn't nearly as fast as this is going to be. The cut quality really is better with the Toro uh, Recycler, this uh, 60 volt. But this is an 82 volt machine versus 60. There is more potential power in this machine than there is this. So 
I cut my grass frequently. I mean, we're talking like every three to five days I'm cutting this lawn. But I have, uh, I call them rough lawns up my hill over here and down my hill on the other side of the house. Those I don't cut nearly as often. And some patches in those get really, really tall and weedy in between mows. So when I go after those, I can really get a good sense of how strong these things are. This snapper is the strongest mower I've got. Now, it doesn't, like I don't own the big five amp hour battery. Snapper XD offers a two amp hour, a four and a five amp hour battery. I have two of the two amp hour batteries. They're extremely strong and they go through the toughest uh, thickest grass and weeds possible without really bogging down and never stalled it. This thing is a beast and it will go through it. But since I use the two amp hour battery, I can't really go more than about 2,500 square feet of lawn space under regular mowing conditions before I have to change that battery out. Now, the Toro. I've got a battery back here. This thing came with it. This is the six amp hour battery. Six is three times this, or what is it? Uh, two, four, six. So this is going to go much longer. Like, you know, in terms of like watching the dial on your clock, you're gonna be able to mow for a lot longer with a six hour, six amp hour battery. Honestly, even if I had the five amp or six is six is more i mean generally speaking now i'm not like a not an electrician i'm not an expert in batteries uh but rule of thumb if the amp hour number is higher then you can use the device longer now there's going to be some exceptions certainly load has something to do with it uh, if i'm going through like extremely hard load on this and really light load on this, then those amp hour things are gonna come closer together. Uh, but generally speaking, this six amp hour battery is gonna last longer than, than that two by a long shot. And that does happen to me when I actually use these things. So anyway, I love this. I think this is great for some people. And here's, here's my caveat, this deck, is a Toro Recycler deck. Now, it's a Toro Recycler, but it's the 60 volt version. Toro makes a number of recycle, uh, recycler uh, units in the gas powered mower uh, category, and they did not redesign the deck for the battery mower. So with the non-redesign, you still have things like this water clean out valve, which I personally don't ever use, and I know lots of people don't ever use them. I don't ever use them, but it is there, and that is a great illustration for the fact that this lawnmower is water resistant. Now, I would never call a battery powered lawnmower of waterproof, but it is nice to know that Toro thinks that it's water resistant enough to give you the direct connection for a garden hose so that you could run the lawnmower with the hose running to clean the thing out. I have a couple other lawnmowers that I have left out in a sprinkler system for hours, and they perform just fine the next day as if they never got hit by water at all. Most modern, and I'm talking like, you know, 2019, 2020 model years and newer. These modern battery mowers are far more water resistant than the, let's say, the first generation models that came out a while back. Uh, we've all kind of gotten accustomed to not really wanting to spray these things down with the garden hose after we use them to clean them out. But these days, if you get a modern, brand new mower, even though you're spending a ton of money on it, they are resistant. They're going to hold up pretty well. Uh, now, I wouldn't spray water into the battery chamber or anything like that. That would just be unnecessary, a little bit silly. But I feel like they would do pretty well under normal circumstances. I do recommend keeping these things in the garage. There's no reason.
reason to keep them outside in the weather unless you absolutely have to. But I think they're going to do just fine. Now, some mowers, for instance, the Ego system, the Ego has a new so, uh, select cut, the 2020 model. It does not include side discharge. Uh, but most of them are three in one. So they will mulch, they will bag, you can attach a bagger to it, and you can side discharge. These are just like that. Uh, Snapper XD comes with a self propelled model. It's got your conventional self propelled bar that you use. This one is the push model. Uh, I like the push model because it's lighter and I've got small tight spaces with lots of lawn toys here for the kids. And so these push models work really well for me. This one, however, is self propelled, but it's different. It's this personal pace. It's the same personal pace that you see on other Toro lawnmowers. Um, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of people that really love this personal pace, and I don't want to knock them. Excuse the wind, and I don't want to knock them. There is nothing wrong with this at all, and I have used this a good number of times over the past two weeks, and I have started to get used to. It. But basically, as you're going, you just kind of you turn it on, and you just kind of. Kind of push it ever so slightly and it just takes off. What I don't like about it is that there's no option to override that. I can't use it as a push style mower. I have to use it as a personal pace. I have to use it as a self-propelled all the time. It's either self-propelled or it is off. Um, the Snapper XD model, the one that does have the self-propelled lever, uh, is like every other self-propelled that you've probably ever used. It, it can operate as a push mower, or you can, you can close the bar up and it will propel itself forward. Now, that's the style of a mower that I do prefer. But it's not for everybody, and there's certainly something to be said for that. windy part of the day apparently. This Toro Recycler, even though it has a wider deck, this, uh, what, it's a 22 inch deck, the blade itself is 21 and 3 quarters. So it's pretty much the whole thing. Um, this thing is made for storage. Like, you just, you just do that, pick that thing up right there, and you can store it in the smallest of spaces, the tiniest of sheds, the most cram-packed garages out there. Um, shoot, you could probably bring it into your broom closet if, if your wife lets you. Um, I do like that. This one will fold up, but you've still got these, you know, you've got this, you gotta undo that, you gotta undo that, you gotta pull this and fold it down. Uh, and it doesn't really have very good, uh, it doesn't have a really good stand to stand it vertically. It certainly will stand vertically, uh, but it's just not, uh, it's just not as easy to do. Put that back. This Toro is, it's probably on par price-wise with the Snapper. Uh, I paid a little bit more for for the Toro, uh, but the thing is, is, this one right here, the Snapper XD, this is the one that doesn't have the self-propelled. Uh, once you add on the self-propelled and the wider deck, the price of this is a pinch more than this, generally. Not always, I mean, you can always shop sales and whatnot. Um, if I were forced to choose between one of these two lawnmowers, and we're talking the self-propelled version, I would probably choose the Snapper XD. Uh, I mean, I am biased. I've been using this for a few months, and I really love this lawnmower. Um, I am coming into my appreciation for the Toro Recycler. When I first used it, I really, really didn't like this. But I have started getting used to it. Uh, a number of commenters, some of the subscribers to this channel, have 
basically told me that the longer you use the uh, personal pace system, the more you uh, the more you appreciate it, the more you like it. And I am finding that uh, to be true uh, to some extent. With this mower, I can literally mow with one hand, uh, which is crazy. Um, so it, it's pretty easy to use. But the thing is, it is heavier. So once you get into turns, um, it's a little bit clunky. It's a little bit hard to uh, learn. It's not hard. Just take some time to learn how this works versus the self-propelled levers that we're all used to. Um, but it is a heavier beast. So this is still, this Toro is much, much lighter and quieter for that matter than most gas powered lawnmowers. But the thing is, compared to other battery mowers, this thing is much uh, heavier and a little bit harder to manhandle, to, to move around. So, you know, the self-propelled personal face system certainly does help with that, but you have to physically move it once you're, once you're doing turns. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, I find the Toro system uh, to be excellent. I prefer the old fashioned self-propelled, but Toro really stands behind their product. They've got good warranties and, um, and they've got an enormous, an enormously good reputation in the lawnmower industry. I would expect these recyclers to be improved over time. Uh, who knows what 2021, 2022, 2023 are going to hold, but currently this is early summer 2020 and I think this is worth your money if you want to go that route. One last thing I want to say about the recycler is I love this right here. This lever is amazing and I haven't seen this on any of the other mowers that I own and I don't believe it's on any of the other mowers that I'm planning on purchasing and testing. This lever is basically your mulch plug. Mowers like this and most of the others have a physical plug, something that you grab and pull out. You open up the door, assuming that there's no grass in the way, which there is here, you pull out the plug. Once you pull the plug out, then you can attach the bag and it will do your bagging. With the recycler, however, if the lever is up, it's in mulch mode. If you want a bag, then you push the lever down and a little trap door inside turns and now you've got an, open, an opening for the bag, which I obviously do not have attached. But this lever is fantastic because it's not an extra part that comes off the mower. Most mowers have, you know, I mean, if you want to do side discharge, you have to pull the thing off and then you got to store it somewhere. Now, I have side discharge chutes for all of my mowers just sitting loose in my garage because I don't side discharge. There's not very... It's not very often that you need to side discharge, uh, at least I don't. Um, so that's an extra part. A mulch plug is another thing. If I want to bag, which I do occasionally, maybe like 5% of the time, um, I have to pull that mulch plug out, attach to the bag, then what do I do with a mulch plug? I set it down somewhere. Usually I set it down and then when I'm done, I put it back in, but there's always the, uh, the always the chance that I just lose it. Uh, I gotta store it somewhere. Uh, I like this lever because I don't have to think like that. I don't have to think about it. Uh, it's just a cool feature. I really like it. Both of these mowers, both of these mowers are some of the strongest battery, cordless, brushless mowers on the market these days. Just hands down. Most mowers are 40 volt and they're only so power powerful. This is an 82 volt, this is a 60 volt. Between 60 and 80 is kind of the range for the most powerful lawnmowers out there. There's only two that I know of that are that have higher voltage than the snapper. 
There's the Yard Force 120, and there's the Sunjo 100. Now, I'm gonna be doing reviews and comparisons of those mowers later this summer. I hope you subscribe and take a look at some of those. If you're shopping for a lawnmower, these are great options. This is my favorite, and this is a great option as well. But I invite you to subscribe, take a look at those reviews when they come out later this summer, and maybe even take a look at a couple of the other reviews that I've done, the comparisons with the Snapper, to some of the others that are a little bit more commonly talked about, found uh, in regular stores out there, like Home Depots of the world. Um, I've compared this to the Ego Select Cuts. I've compared this to the uh, uh, to the Greenworks 80 volt, and there's a number of others. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and catch me on another video not too down the, not too far down the road. Thank you very much, and super sorry about the wind. What are you gonna do?